Hey guys, it's Callus back to bring you another set from the Pokemon Perfect 2021 ADV Championship round of eight. It is Ibitum and PK Leech, also known as PK Thunderbolt, and apparently PK Nab as well. Same guy. Uh, these guys have played each other before in one of the previous ADV opens. I think PK won, but I'm not 100% positive. I don't know that I actually watched those matches. But yeah, uh, they've definitely played before, just don't remember the outcome, and here is their rematch in the top 8 of the championship. As with all matches in this particular tournament, it is a best of 3, and we're of course starting with game 1, so let's get into it. I bit him's on the bottom, and PK Nab is on the top. For those of you unfamiliar, I bit him is an old school ladder guy, it was one of the top ladder players 5-ish years ago. Participated in Callus Invitational 1, went out with an 0-2, but very capable. He's also a noteworthy builder in the Pokemon spectrum, very heavily favors stall teams. Uh, he dips into CM spam as well. Those are his two go-to archetypes, but by and large, he really likes very stally teams. PK Nab, on the other hand, who has a mystery bus here, I guess he's stealing the janky h clat special, but PK Nab here is a little bit newer to the scene, to my knowledge, or at least on the competitive scene. Maybe he's been lurking and playing Mons for a long time, I don't know. Uh, but has just stepped into the competitive spotlight not all that long ago. And hasn't done anything in, like, huge tours, but is someone that the people deep within the ADV community are familiar with, and is somebody who uh, has been getting results in more minor tournaments, such as Pokemon Perfect and other side tours. So anyhow... Uh, looks like we have a stall on stall mirror, so this could potentially take a minute. Oh yeah, this is the old school M Dragon team from PK Nab with the one minor tweak of he's using Mystery Bus over Gengar. But other than that one modification, this is an old school 2015 World Cup M Dragon team. Uh, very stally, and I bit him, like I said. A player who very much favors Stahl, as in in general, that's certainly not to say that's the only thing that he can play, because I don't view that to be the case, but that's definitely his go-to, and this looks to be a pretty stall -y team here. So we've got a Rest Parish Song Mystery Bus over what is often a Gengar slot, otherwise it looks pretty standard. Focus Punch here coming down from a physical tire for I bit him, about a third to Skarm. Toxic blinking on Rachi. We did see Selby get picked off, of course, by the Dugtrio in exchange for some damage earlier. And here comes a Pert. So this could really be grindy uh, if this is two stally do-nothing teams and I bid him doesn't have spikes. But he doesn't seem to have a spinner either. Uh, so you could think that PK Nab eventually here will establish an advantage by getting spikes down and just grinding the game out. Generally, in stall on stall, which it's still not a guarantee. I bid him steam could be a little more on the balance side. But if it is two stall teams here, generally, if one of them has spikes and the other doesn't, and also doesn't have a spinner, of course, that's a pretty huge advantage. Generally, it, it's a pretty... I mean, there's no guarantees in Pokemon, but it's a pretty decent bet that the guy who's got the spikes is going to eventually win that game. You never know, though, especially with pokes like this. I mean, Jirachi is just something that can absolutely BS a game, spiraling out of control. Uh, he's one freeze, one crit, whatever it may be, away from just getting there. And maybe it is closer to a balance for a bit of him anyway, because Endeavor Pert here is not a poke that you see on stall teams. So that makes it a little more interesting. Endeavor there is going to not do a lot to Dahl, but he's just going to be able to outspeed it and get it with Surf. Can't even miss. It's Surf, not Hydro Pump. Here's Dougie, which obviously if he's making this switch, he's going to be Jolly, not Adamant. And he's going to know that he's faster. So now we know if there was any doubt that it's a Jolly Dugtrio for PK Nab, but the end pert is successfully revenge killed. And on we go with the game. 5-4 to four situation. PK in the lead. Hidden poke in the back for I bit him. Rock slide there, 25%. Doesn't like it, goes back. And Toxic, good thing he did go back because pending a crit or a flinch, that Toxic, well, or a miss, would have connected with the T-Tire. 
Here's Thunderbolt, 20% chance every time he does that to find Para with the Serene Grace doubling the base 10% chance. He now fishes for a freeze with Ice Punch, why not? Damage difference is whatever, and he's got rest. He was just going for hacks there. Out of the way, just in case he goes for mean look, but that's not the case. It's going to be Skarm, which Zapdos is obviously happy about, but can't really do anything against a 91% Blissey. Even there, Thunderbolt crit only 42%, can instantly be soft-boiled away. He does at least get momentum because he gets to go to Titar. And PK Nab playing it aggressively. He opts for the Ice Beam here. Not sure what he was trying to play around. I don't know that I personally love that play. I think I would have gone for soft-boiled there, but I guess he thinks it's really important to get chip damage on the tar. So if that was the goal, he has succeeded. The tar is definitely in Dugtrio range now. Should PK Nab opt for some kind of fodder? Sneaks Dougie in here. I guess he thought that T-Tower was going to come in now, but it does not. And he stays in for the rock slide. I bid him, lets it happen. Down goes the Zapdos and the lead bigger for PK Nab. Now 5-3. to three. However, like I said, still the hidden poke in the back for I bid him. Thunderbolt here with a chance, as is Ice Punch. No, doesn't find the crit or the freeze that he's looking for. And there is the rest. Missy back to very safe. At this point, I bid him, gonna go for the setup. He's gonna sub. Of course, the Parish Song is still gonna work through the substitute. But he's gonna get himself a little bit big and start firing off some shots before he's forced out by the Parish Song. So one combine, he says, is enough. T-Bolt there a little better than a third at 36%, and the obligatory Parish Song comes down at this point. Pretty sure you could just go to Bliss if you're PK Nab, and that is what he does. Ice Punch, 15%, no freeze, and pending a power, full power or a freeze here, Bliss he can just soft boiled and be A-OK. -okay. Fishing for the freeze, doesn't get it, and Crisis averted here. Parish count down to one. Rachi will either have to die or get out of the way. Of course, opting for the latter. And Dugtrio all over it is going to get Tar as it comes in. There's EQ. Down that goes. PK Nab looking to put the stranglehold on this game. However, of note here, when it is not Gengar, when it is Mystery Vus, I bid him knows that the Mystery Vus obviously can't have Explosion. It simply doesn't learn the move. And the only other thing on the team that could have Explosion, Claydol, is already down. So all of a sudden, this doesn't look so bad for I bid him. If he can get down to Last Poke Kuhn, or frankly, even maybe Last Poke Rachi, but that's a little bit less safe because of the Dugtrio, but then Substitute comes into play, that one's a little more complicated. But if he gets down to Last Poke Kuhn, that could actually be very difficult for PK Nab to deal with. I know from personal experience, having played this team, the Gengar variant anyway, many times that Kuhn in general, certainly Last Poke Kuhn, is a very difficult poke for this team to deal with. So I would not be surprised, actually, if I bid him, who has, been, who has been behind all game, manages to actually win this game on the back of the last poke Kuhn. He's also got the Rachi going on right now, which, I mean, honestly, with the Mystery Vest solo, wow, he switches out. Well, the last poke Kuhn plan is out the window. So here we go, Jirachi. I bet him could still win with this Rachi here. Attack, sub. Okay, sub works. I don't know about the Duck Trio right here. Now Kuhn, but that could still just be outsped and T-bolted down. I'm not sure where he thinks he's going. I don't know that I love the immediate Duck Trio there for PK Nabby. It was never... Uh, what did he want him to do? I bet him was never Thunderbolting there. It was always going to be Ice Punch or sub. There's the EQ, sure, but Duck Trio obviously not about to survive Ice Punch. Ah, going to go down to Missy and get the game-winning Parish Song off is the plan, but he's outsped and killed. Critical hit there. It takes any suspense out of it. Don't know if it was a damage roll or not, but obviously no chance of surviving with the crit. And Rachi here doing Rachi things. It looks like a non-Estos Bliss for PK Nab. Yeah. We've seen the full set. It's Bolt Beam Heal Bell Soft. So this is going to handily lose to this Jirachi. Thunderbolt Crit breaks the sub, sure, but nothing preventing the reestablishment of another. I bid him's got this. He's been behind all game, but he plays to his outs. He understands what he needs to do to win. 
And he simply plays patiently and waits for a last poke, either Kuhn, which didn't work out because of a crit, or Jirachi, which he realizes will be good enough. Last poke bonds like that are a real challenge for the outdated archetype that PK Nab is running. It was a really good team back in its time, and perhaps for a couple years following as well. Like I said, it's a team that I have also used quite a bit, have a lot of personal experience with, and have a lot of positive experiences with, but... It is a product of its time, and it does not stand up against threats like this. The sub-combine two-attack bolt beam Rachi, which was not really a thing back in 2015 when this team was originally created. And it's a massive issue, as you can see here. It's going to handily clean him up. PK Nab not conceding, but I bid him's got this. Just a matter of time. Only way it wouldn't work is if he somehow stalled him out. But yeah, the crit, the freeze, the the para, whatever, it's coming. It's inevitable. Frozen Skarm, down that goes by a long shot with the 4x bazillion boosted Rachi. And yeah, that's going to be game one to I bit him. Like I said, I was impressed by the way he played. Very patient, understood his outs. Didn't matter that he let himself get behind. He was down... 5-3, to three, he was down 5-2, to two, whatever. He understood what he needed to do to win that game. And he understood the matchup, navigated it well. And he got a deserved victory in this game one. So it will now fall on PK, Thunderbolt, Leech, Nab, whatever. PK, Fire, like Ness. It'll fall on him to get two in a row from I bit him, Or he'll be out of this tournament and I bit him will have his revenge, because like I said, I think he lost the first time. Sue. Here's game two. I bit him's on the bottom again. PK Nab, Leech, Thunderbolt, whatever, on the top. And we have Zapdos leads from both guys. Thunderbolt is going to land a 10% para, but that won't stop Baton Pass. Back to his own Zapdos. And we have the uncommon light screen Zapdos for PK Nab. Thunderbolt, again, it's interesting that he's not afraid of just a flat-out BP to Dugtrio. And looks like he's justified in that. It's not seemingly a BP zap, which is rare. Almost every zap these days seems to be BP. But we do have a bulky set. And we got some hacks here for, for PK Nab early on. A An Ice Beam from Dull, which a lot of people don't even use anymore. A lot of people think it's really janky. But Ice Beam Dull, the janky old-school tech is going to land an insta-freeze on the Kuhn. The damage is irrelevant, but the freeze is really stanky for him. See if he can thaw or if he's just going to be on ice for the remainder of the match. And this team from Ibidum looks remarkably similar to the previous game. Celebi, Rachi, Kuhn, maybe Zapdos, I don't remember, but Celebi, Rachi, Kuhn were all on the team before for Ibidum. Uh This man sticks with what he likes. He's not exactly the most versatile or rounded player, but his success speaks for itself, and hopefully, yeah, uh, hopefully he can navigate to victory. Well, one thing that he does is he gets out of the nonsense here. He was frozen, but he thawed pretty quickly, so this is obviously good. And now Thunderbolt coming down from Zapdos. Psychic, 23%. And Light Screen. Of note, neither player with T-Tower, so no Sand in play. I mean, two-thirds of the team for PK still unrevealed. Totally could be a T-Tire in the back. But in the meantime, it's not there. Another Ice Beam on Kuhn. The damage is pathetic. It negates lefties only at 6%, which is nothing. The thing with that that's scary, of course, is the possibility of the freeze, which we already saw happen once. That Ice Beam would normally do a lot more at plus one, but it seems to be a bulky Celebi, and he's got a light screen going on. This one, once again, as I said in the previous game, could be a grind. Well, that helps break through grinds. Psychic crit at plus one kills Zapdos. And I bid him can't follow up with Dugtrio either because Celebi was at 100%. If it was at even like 80%, the Dugtrio could probably get him. But at a hundo, I think you just lose your Dugtrio. So rough break for I bid him. Going to have to just lose his Zapdos and move along. And he's got Magneton last poke. What an unusual double trapper team for I bid him. Mag is not what I would have thought that the last poke is. I guess it makes sense with Celebi and Kuhn, but overall this is a weird team structure that that I wouldn't have anticipated. I don't know what about it specifically feels like it doesn't fit, but it's a weird structure. But hey, 
No judgment, man. Whatever wins. So let's see if he can get it done. We've got a Rachi on Rachi situation, and they're both very boosted here. So this could get ugly real fast. I bit him is paralyzed, but he's way more boosted for the time being. And he's going to, well, pff, that'll break it wide open. Insta crit. Here's Earthquake and Ice Punch. All right, simple as that. Well, Pokemon is easy. Stalemates get broken pretty quickly when you just insta crit. So that'll work. So I bit him has regained the lead. He's got the 5 4 advantage. I was going to say hidden poke in the back for PK. Wow, these are remarkably similar teams. It's a 5 mon mirror match. Both of them with Zapdos, Celebi, Kuhn, Rachi, Dougie. The only difference is Nab has opted for a Clay Doll, and I bit him has opted for a Magneton. I personally think I like the Doll better in on this comp in that spot. But regardless, these are remarkably similar teams from these two. And I bit him is going to miss Toxic on Doll on the way out. Could matter if it is a non-refresh, non-rest Doll which, given the fact that it has Ice Beam, I think is a pretty good bet. Kuhn comes in, scares away the doll, fires his own Ice Beam off in case something other than the opposing Kuhn comes in. Might as well fish for that freeze. It would also be super effective against Celebi and Zapdos, of course, so I get why he did that. And now the Kuhn, who is poisoned, is going to calm mind up. Celebi comes in trying to bait a Surf, and Nab does not fall for that. He simply takes a nap instantly. BP to Rachi here, who's going to be stuck with that power for the rest of the game, it looks like. And now back to Celebi. Leech Seed, sure. You know, <laughs> this looks remarkably similar to what I said in the previous game, only in the reverse, where, I mean, neither team, frankly, but even more so Ibidim's team, doesn't look all that well equipped to deal with the last poke Kuhn. Now, Kuhn in general, you would go, wait a minute, it looks great. You can hit it with Zapdos super effectively, Magneton super effectively. You can combat it with your own Kuhn and eventually roar it out. You can get a Leech Seed on it with Doug, with uh, Celebi. Yeah, I mean, on paper, it looks like you're good against Kuhn. But I don't know that you actually are because none of those things really kill Kuhn other than the Stab T-Bolts that like anybody worth a damn is not going to let their Kuhns take. So how do you actually long-term, how do you beat a late game or a last poke Kuhn that is a bigger question. And the Kuhn actually looks like a real problem. I bit him steam. I don't know. I just, there's something about the structure that I just don't like. It just, it feels, man, it feels to me like it might lack offensive pressure. Just, there's no spikes. There's no sand. I look at I bit him steam and it's like, man, wouldn't like a, like a curse body slam earthquake rest lax just be, a nightmare to deal with like how, how do you beat stuff like that you can leech seed it but like is that the answer i don't know bulky mons in general lax coon opposing rachi whatever just they, they just look difficult i mean i bit him has like little sprinkles of answers to almost everything somewhere but i don't know if he has like full fleshed out this really, truly deals with the thing long-term kind of answers. And I think we might see that come into play here. This looks, again, like it might be a long one, as I thought the previous one might be. This one might be even longer, actually. Uh, these these teams are both on the do-nothing side, unfortunately. I'm not saying either one is a bad team. It just so happens that they went into this specific matchup, where neither has spikes, neither has sand, they both have bulky teams. It's just a weird matchup for sure. But it's a matchup that I think is very likely to go long. And I very well may opt to speed this up. I've been narrating this on normal. I think we're just going to go ahead and switch over to fast. Not quite prepared to go to hyper fast yet. But let's see where we get with fast. Because like I said, th this one this one might take a minute i'm expecting we go past good old turn 100 but maybe not the the coon long term like i said looks like an issue to me uh specifically nab's coon looks like an issue for i bit him and this could come to a situation where pp is a factor both of them bringing double pressure in the zap coon of course i bit him zapdos has been dead for quite a while it was the first thing to go down uh but the fact that the only attacking move 
is Surf. We see the full set. I guess one move is cut off by the screen, but Combine Surf Rest Roar is the set we're looking at for Nab. So, of course, the only attacking move is Surf. Uh, between the Celebi resistance, between the Coon resistance, between the pressure, it is possible that his path out of this is just a PP stall out the Surf. And really, that isn't the wildest thing. I think he has a, a reasonable shot to do that. If the Coons PP stall each other out, then this is only going to go even longer. I can only imagine how long this would take if that's the way this ends up going. If both Coons are down to the point of no attacking PP, this could take a hot fucking minute. The battle rage is on. Dugtrio with an opportunity. And Nab wisely does not allow Zapdos to stay in on what would have been a KO rock slide, assuming it hit. Doll on Rachi. Uh, to I bid him's credit, he has uh, nursed the Rachi up to pretty good health here. It was down to, I don't know, certainly the low yellow. It might have even been in the red, but it was very low. And he has managed many times to get it in and slowly but surely get it some lefties. It's back up to 74%, which is pretty good. The power is still there, which stinks, and it kicks in here. But he does get it back up to where it could potentially be useful. And Ice Beam doesn't freeze here. And by Ice Beam, I mean Ice Punch. So now Celebi getting pretty big. But it's that old school set where the only attacking move is Psychic. Thank God I bit him doesn't have a T-Tower because that would completely blank it. But Rachi 4X resists that. And there's the Doug Trio to follow up if the Celebi gets any damage whatsoever on it. But not looking to be the case here against Rachi. We have crossed that 100 turn barrier as I thought we would. And there's a Psychic which once again PP is a consideration it's the only attacking move that he has. It's only got the 16 base PP. If he happens to do it against Kuhn, it's going to cost him two. I mean, against Kuhn now would be a good thing because he's so boosted. But I mean in general. And I bit him as trying to stall him out with his own Celebi. Which, honestly, a crit isn't even good enough based on these damage rolls. As, as we see here, there's 89%. It's not even enough. He would need two crits. And stranger things have happened, but I mean, simply not getting the two crits over the course of only 16 psychics, you know, it's not too wild. And the two crits have to be reasonably close together as well, because he's, there we go, because he's a turn or two away from where, the, where another crit wouldn't even be good enough. So he does find the crit and he does kill I bit him Celebi, so that breaks the game open a little bit, but... I don't know how many Psychics he has left, but it can't be too many. We've got ourselves a 4-3. to three. This says he has two. And I don't know how many were against Kuhn. I bit him, I guess, must have miscounted there and let his Dunk Trio die. Either that or he was intentionally foddering it to go down to last Kuhn or last Rachi. And Celebi, despite all the boosts, must switch out here. He must finally be out of Psychics. So that leaves us in a 2-4 to four as the game grinds on. There's Ice Beam. Yeah, I mean, I bit him once again. Very similarly to last game. If he wins, he's going to have to go down to Last Poke Kuhn or Last Poke Rachi, which is the exact same thing I said before. It's weird that I've said that twice in a row in the same match, but here we are. Last Poke Kuhn or Last Poke Rachi going to be his only bet. And at this point, it's going to just have to be Last Poke Kuhn because obviously his Rachi can't withstand the other Kuhn. So Nab immediately goes to Zapdos. There's Thunderbolt. Ice Beam he knows is going to come back pretty soon. So he's going to have to Thunderbolt him again. And he does. And the Ice Beam doesn't kill. That's a bulky Zapdos. Thunderbolt yet again. And there's the Surf. So Kuhn down to just 15. Now 21%. And there's Leech Seed and Rest respectively. However, Celebi out of Psychic PP. And the doll not a threat to the coon. So he's going to have to get there with his own coon, which he could, especially with the leech seed backing him up. But it's not guaranteed either. We're not done yet. This could go to a game three, or it could be a 2 0. I bid him victory. Let me remind you, of course, that I bid him did win game one in this best of three. So should I bid him get it done here through the leech seed? 
He's going to knock out P.K. Nab, and that's that. And if P.K. wins, it will simply send us to a third game. And the fish for a crit game begins. Leech Seed, obviously a massive asset in this situation. Oh, man, even more awkwardly, I think they have a speed tie as well. So this is some RNG. We have equally fast coons in a speed tie. Uh, and then they, yeah, and then they're both just fishing for crits. I mean, the advantage mathematically has to be with PK here. Killing Celebi helps, but the advantage still has to be with PK. I mean, if it really comes down to it, coon on coon, one of them is leech seed, one of them doesn't. It's not a guarantee. I mean, he could just crit him right here, and boom, Coon's dead. But uh, I think Nab wins this most of the time. One crit for my bit him just changes everything. Probably wins him the game. And we have seen quite a bit of crit and hacks and freezes and whatever nonsense this series can happen anytime to anybody. One crit, GG. Surf PP is a factor here. Not sure how many he has left, but there can't be too many. 24 to begin with. This says 13, but it doesn't track pressure, so he's got to be way, way lower than that. He's got to have like five left or something like that. He might even be out right now. There's Ice Beam. If he doesn't have any surfs, he might as well forfeit. Yeah, he's out. So we are going to go to a game three. PK Nab is going to have successfully navigated this and managed to avoid the critical hit. And they'll send us to a third, hopefully less stally game. Both of them on the slow side. This one, 155, 156 turns and counting. 156 ends up being the final turn. PK wins the basically mirror match, pseudo mirror match. They have five pokes in common here. PK the victor sends us to a decisive game three that hopefully doesn't go 155 turns while I narrate this before work. So, here's game three. I bit him on the bottom one more time, PK on the top one more time. Skarm and Zap respectively, and man does I bit him love himself some Celebi. Leech Seed light screen, oh no, oh no, not light screen. <laughs> It's another stall team! Hey, it's Cristiano Armaldo. That's a cute nickname. And there is knockoff. No more lefties for Rachi. And here is Registeel. Here's an I bit him team if I've ever seen one. This man dedicated to the art, to the craft of the stall team. Busting out the Registeel here. Tossing out some underwhelming S tosses at the Rachi. However, Remember, he doesn't have lefties, so, hey, it all adds up. Man, that Thunder with the boost. Sub one-fourth. The overpowered Registeel. Oh, no, Doug Chio comes up short. No! And I bit him. Right play, wrong result. Hidden power bug there. Man, losing the Duck Trio might have been crucial there. He's going to try to surf for a knockoff to remove Coon Lefties, which I think is a good play. This would be a lot more exciting if there were Sand right now, which there isn't, but there totally could be in the back. But nevertheless, both the Rachi and the Coon will play the rest of this game without their leftovers. And like I said, I bid him has wood for Celebi. Loves that Pokemon. Loves the Onion. And there's Ductrio coming in behind the safety of a light screen, withstanding HP Grass and Giga Drain. Yeah. And by the way, did I just say that correctly? Yeah, I totally did. Just making sure I'm not hallucinating. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You know what it was? I think the hidden power for Celebi, I think it was Ice. Because there's just no way he has both HP, ass and, uh, HP Grass and Giga Drain. I, I said HP Ass, but that's because it would have been Ass if he had both HP Grass and Giga Drain. <laughs> I think he had HP Ice and Giga Drain. That's the only thing that makes sense there. There's absolutely no way he has Grass plus Giga. He just doesn't. It's stupid. So that's got to be HP Ice, which is what threw me off there. HP Ice on Celebi is really rare. But apparently, that's what he has here. 
Perhaps he doesn't have a bulky water and he's using multiple little things like that to try to overcompensate and hit Flygon and Salamence or whatever. Things that bulky waters would traditionally check. Sue, so, all that being said, uh, as cool as I Bidim's team is, he's got an Armaldo and a Steelix, so lots of love and appreciation for that man. Doesn't look like it's going so well. Nab with a clear lead, and Doll is a poke that I bid him definitely doesn't want him to have. He can switch in the Armaldo on rapid spins and force knockoffs, but that's not that good after the first and second time because the knockoff has already happened on the Kun and the Rachi. You're not threatening it anymore. You can't double knockoff its leftovers, so it's just not that exciting anymore. And Nab's team, is this the exact same team from the previous game? I believe that it is. Man, not a lot of variety. Both these guys have an absolute Celebi crush, and Nab's team is remarkably similar. In this case, it looks like the exact same team. And in Ibidim's case, he likes to hold his last poke back. I noticed that with him. He likes to hide his last poke for a long time. That's a behavioral, a behavioral pattern that I've noticed in all three of these games. He's just keeping it sneaky, sneaky in the back. But yeah, this one hopefully will not go 100 plus turns, and it doesn't look like it's going to. This is looking rough for Ibinim. I liked his early game quite a bit until the Doug Trio got picked off by the Rachi. I don't know if the plan was he thought that the roll would be better and he would kill the Rachi, it wouldn't survive, or if he thought even if he doesn't kill the Rachi, he was supposed to live that plus one ice punch, if not for the crit, which of course Nab instantly got. But yeah, I mean, either way, it would have been fine. If he lives the Ice Punch, that's fine. You still kill the Rachi. A lot of Dugtrio these days, not all of them, but a lot of them are very, very specially bulky. And yeah, you just, they're built to always survive even max modest Blissey Ice Beam. And then you beat them up and get it done that way. I don't know if that was the case here, but like I said, special bulk, very common on Dugtrio these days. Totally possible that he was thinking he would live the plus one ice punch from a bulky Rachi, which invests little or nothing into special attack. Don't know. The world may never know, but the bottom line is the crit happened, which obviously made it zero chance for the Duck Trio to survive. And since then, it's been pretty much all PK in this one. Having a hard time figuring out how I bid him wins. I mean, somehow killing the Claydol, or at least knocking off the Claydol... Would be a pretty good step one, and then trying to milk those spikes. The Registeel is a great wall that Nab doesn't seem to have a fantastic answer for. But it's not so much that I bid him is getting run over by offensive pressure from Nab. It is more that I don't know how I bid him wins. Rapid spin. Oh, he knocks off. I don't know if I like that. HP bug would have killed him there, I think. I don't know that I love the knockoff there. It isn't bad by any means. I mean, knocking off any poke that hasn't previously been knocked off is always a good thing. But, I mean, if he just bugs, does Claydol die? Very well may. It depends on the attack investment of the Armaldo, but I guess the knockoff is better if the bug wouldn't have killed him. And I, I'll be the first to admit that I, I do not know my Armaldo calcs by heart, so... Not sure if that would have killed or not. I feel like Stab HP Bug, if he's got a decent amount of attack investment, could kill him there. But I don't know. Uh, if it could kill him, you're obviously just supposed to bug. If not, then I guess the knockoff is going to have to do. And now, slowly but surely, I bid him could try to reestablish spikes, keep him down, chip away at the doll, all that good stuff. There's a lair after getting three spun away. Still hiding that last poke, as he tends to do. It's so weird to me, if it isn't T-Tower in the back for I bid him, that he would run this knockoff focus team without sand. I mean, maybe he's banking that his opponent is going to bring sand a very high percentage of the time, which, which is probably a decent bet. But as it happens, just Nab hasn't done that. He's brought the same team twice in a row, and, well, doesn't have a T-Tower on it. Here comes Kuhn trying to eat the wish. Hidden power there wouldn't even be good enough with a crit. And Kuhn is going to receive the wish. Rachi left pretty low, though, of note for PK. 
I don't know what the last poke is for I bit him. It's clearly not a ghost. If it's tar, I think you would have found an opportunity to get it in by now. I guess it could be like a DD tower for cleanup, but like I would have gotten that thing in years ago, even if just to go in and go out just to get the damn sand down. And yeah, like I said, it can't be a ghost. It's not going to be a bulky water. Is it an arrow in the back for I bit him? Or is it just another random stall poke? Is it just my low dick or something? Or is it a water? Is it just like last poke coon? And he's once again playing this game, going down to last poke coon. Alternatively, is it just last poke Rachi? None of the above. I mean, it is a water, but it's not a bulky water. Star me, what we're opting for here. Uh, yeah, maybe if it if it's an off star and. Yeah, if it's an off star and the Dug Trio goes down, or if it's an off star and happens to be an Adamant Dug on the other side, but I believe we established in the previous game, assuming that this is the exact same team, that it's a Jolly Dug. Dug Trio is going to die to another spike, though, which may or may not be there. The Claydol is still alive. Rock Slide on Armaldo, of course, finds a flinch, which is pretty rough because it's the difference between the life or death of Armaldo. If you don't flinch there, you just kill the Dougie, and Armaldo lives to fight another day. I think that'll speed up the game. And there's that stupid Ice Beam from Doll. Man, Ice Beam Doll is bleh. Rapid spin. Yeah. I interesting. I don't love this team from NAB, but I mean, results are results. And it uh, it won before, and it's well on its way to winning two games in a row. Two games out of two for NAB. So whatever gets it done, right? Here comes Celebi. T-Wave, sure. I think at this point I'm going to do as I did in the previous game. I'm just going to go ahead and switch it over to fast. I have a really hard time at this point envisioning I bit him winning. The only thing I could think of is that it is actually an off-star, and the off-star cleans up the game at the end. Uh, but that is the only path that I can envision at this point. Pending an off-star, and we don't know because we've only seen Psychic, but... Pending an off-star, I don't see it happening. And even then, I mean, he's going to have to, like, insta-crit the Celebi here with Ice Beam or something. He's going to go Rapid Spin. That, uh, it still could be an off-star. It could be three attacks plus Rapid Spin. But that means he's missing something. That means he's missing either a Water, Electric, or Ice Attack, which, all of which are relevant here. Need the Ice for Celebi, need the Electric for Coon, so on and so forth. It looks over to me, which is why I switched it over to fast. Neither player in any of the games has opted to concede. They've played it out to the bitter end, even when games are clearly over. And that is certain, certainly their prerogative to do. But I don't think I have too much more to narrate here. I don't want to put on hyper fast just yet, because... Not the most fun to watch. It'll kind of zoom by. But I don't think I have too much more to say. I guess I can talk about SPL briefly. Uh, strong signups coming in at the end. I mean, to nobody's surprise, Tony and BKC have opted to sign up late. And they're going to obviously get Wolfpack again, as, as they automatically always should after winning the year before the... All the playoff teams from the year before should automatically get to come back. If, if their manager wants to come back, they should be able to, period. No questions asked. And then uh, the, another playoff team, the classiest, Donut and FMG have opted to come back as well. They will, again, obviously and deservingly get their team as well. Uh, so the competition is getting really tough, really stiff. And I feel... Very uncertain and very insecure about Bush and I getting a team, but obviously I hope that we do. Hey, my little SPL talk managed to get us through the end of the game. Uh, 124 turns is what it took. All of these on the lengthy side. 77 turns is the shortest one. And then 156 and 124. A couple of long ones here. Yeah, PK and Nab, all three games did not bring T Tower. He played the whole set without Tower. All three of his teams kind of similar here. The man loves Coon. The man loves these, like, safe, do-nothing-y stall teams. 
Certainly something if I were his next round opponent that I would take note of and attempt to exploit, but we'll leave the strategy to the professionals. The result is PK Nab 2, I bid him 1, Nab is going to advance to the round of 4, and I bid him is going to be out. Even though these games were a little stally and grindy, I hope you enjoyed them anyway. Please leave a thumbs up if you did, and feel free to chime in on the series or anything else you want in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.